and welcome to another episode of Showreel. I'm one of your hosts, Danny Backinger, and I'm joined by Catherine Tucker. Today we'll be talking to Charmaine Warpaint Orchard, who is special effects makeup artist and a business owner, as well as bringing you all the latest in movie news, including a review of the new action film, The Wolverine. Thanks, Danny. Our guest Charmaine has worked in the film industry for four years and now works in a multitude of industries creating makeup, special effects, designing, prop making, sculpting, creating and a little bit of photography. She also runs two businesses called Shoot the Town Red and Gorgeous Portraits with emphasis being on the gore. Well thanks for joining us today Charmaine. Um, Gosh, we've got a lot to get through today. Um, can you tell us a little bit about working in this field, the special effects, how did you get started? I got started when I attended uh, the Frampton Institute on the Gold Coast. Peter Frampton was teaching there. Mm -hmm. And it was really inspiring and um, he's a very talented man. And yeah, just working with people doing it and transforming them from one thing to another was really exciting for me. Yeah. And is it something you always wanted to do um, or did you just decide one day, you know, I want to give this a go and let's, let's see how it goes? I always wanted to be an artist but my logical side kind of went, ah, oh, they kind of die poor and unknown. <laughs> so I let it go and slide and just did part-time artwork for a while and then one day I went, no, this is what I really want to do. Let's just do it. Fantastic. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about one of your businesses, Shoot the Town Red, which you said you started six years ago. Yeah. How did you get started with that one? And, and tell us a little bit about that business. Well, after I completed my course, um, I was on, I did a competition shortly after that. And then I got put on my first feature film like two weeks after the course. Oh, surreal. Yeah. So, and I, it was, it was a lot of fun. And I remember my first day, um, I walked in and they said, oh, okay, today we want you to cast this person, this person. We want a full head cast, a full torso cast. And I remember thinking in my head, oh, my God, I've only ever done a nose or a chin. This is going to be, I'll just have to duck out and get a little bit more alginate. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but pulled it off and you make it work when you've got time constraints. Yeah, it was heaps of fun, though. And thrown in the deep end. And that definitely also thrown it. in the deep end. It's a good way to learn. And what kind of makeup in, in particular do, do you do with the business um, Shoot the Town Red? With Shoot the Town Red, I do mainly, um, I do more beauty orientated, more fashion and more body painting. So more just creative side and that sort of thing, whereas I keep most of my gore and horror for gorgeous portraits. Yeah, and yeah. what kind of clientele do you, you find you get with that business? Do you get everyday people as well coming in and yeah. wanting to be transformed? It's funny because we quite often get people going, oh, if you ever need a model, and I'm like, well, actually, we use everyday people. We don't use models in particular. So everybody from, we've had two-year-olds done up as the little matchstick girl with burnt hands and, and things like that up to, yeah, full family portraits of like a, a whole family ran a fish and chip shop. So they had a big pirate zombie photo shoot and they have all their pictures up in their business. So yeah. we get, yeah, from all... All work, walks of life. Imagine definitely. play dates of that family <laughs> walking in and seeing the photos on the wall there. Yeah. It's definitely a bit different to the traditional, you know, happy Glamour, family yeah, portraits. Yeah. It kind of puts a nice little spin on it, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, and we've had like whole families done up as the Adams family and oh, all different things, whatever floats people's boat. Yeah. <laughs> you can make it happen for yeah, them basically. Yeah. Absolutely. Anything that's outside the box, that's what we like to do. And yeah. with um, gorgeous portraits, I love how you've got the gore, you know, in the title. <laughs> yeah. In fact, both you your um, business is here, Shoot the Town Red and Gorgeous Portraits. You would have put a lot of thought into the titles there, because yeah. that's clever how it, yeah, you know, yeah. it reads. Yeah, Gorgeous oh. Portraits, we wanted to get, we wanted to do portraits. We, want, yeah. we wanted to not have the classic where everybody goes and sits in front of a fake yeah. background with the same smile and the same crossed legs. That's what we all think of. Yeah, so we wanted to do something for people who wanted something different, something to show off something about themselves yeah. and what's on in their own life and something a bit different because, yeah. yeah, no use recreating the wheel. Yeah. yeah, and how did you get started with, with Gorgeous uh, gorgeous portraits because that one started a little bit after you um, started Shoot the Town Red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was working, I started my first business with Charmaine Orchard and then went on to Shoot the Town Red and I got asked by a model to go and do her makeup for a particular shoot and it ended up being at Walston House which is the old crazy asylum in, in Queensland and it was such an amazing place and everybody was so into um, creating it and all the models mm -hmm. and they're all Alice in Wonderland characters and the photographer I, used, I worked with that day we started 
going, we should do more of this, we should do more of this. And that's how Gorgeous Portrait started. Because she's one of those people that is covered in tattoos and piercings and into the heavy metal crowd and alternative scene. And it started like that. Fantastic. And do you find now with the, you know, there's a lot of those zombie movies out and, and all that kind of stuff, has that kind of, you know, increased with, uh, your work, you know, doing yeah. Gorgeous Portraits? Because yeah. I mean, you do the zombie walk and all lots of yeah, different types I've, of events. Yeah, yeah, we've been doing the zombie walk for five years now. We've been one of the sponsors every year and we raise a lot of money for the Brain Foundation. And we have the, the splatter tent set up. So if people don't want to get full gourd, they can just come in and get splattered with blood. And then we always take oh. bookings. And usually for the last three, I've been booked for 48 hours of straight work before the zombie walk. So I literally fit right in <laughs> <laughs> so when I, I do know, the zombie yeah. walk. A bit of bags under the yeah, eyes yeah, and had a few copies really by the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can see some photos that you've brought today. Can yes. you show us some of them? Or what's your favorite yeah, sure. one anyway, sitting here? This is one of my favourite pieces I've done. I, I quite often go into the um, Australian body art competition and this was my mer um, cyborg mermaid because the theme was ocean. Mm. So I knew quite a few people would probably do a mermaid but I wanted to do something that was bit quite different. different. That's, a that's a very different yeah, mermaid. <laughs> and I'm a bit of a Geiger fan and I wanted to do something in between. It's not yeah. over the top but yeah. it's unusual. So that one. That's incredible. This is one of my regular, like, this was from last year's Zombie Walk. This is Sarah. Um, and I did that in about 35, 40 minutes. And it was all just literally put on her face and then ripped apart and coloured in really quite quickly. And um, she, she has, like, five wow. children and always comes to the Zombie Walk and has an absolute ball. And she's probably one of our best repeat customers as well. I can't believe that only took 40 minutes. Yeah, I, yeah. Honestly, I would have I would have thought that would have taken at least half a day. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, we're pretty down pat on getting things done in a hurry yeah. these days. <laughs> well, you must yeah. be, you sound extremely busy with, yeah. with all your work. Yeah. Um, and some of it, you know, we've got such a variety of stuff here. Yeah. How do you get your inspiration for all this? Do you just kind of get in and get in, get started? Or, you know, do you, what do you, how do you get your inspiration? It really varies a lot. Um, quite often it's a case of just turning up and just starting to do something. And mm. I quite often do that where something just starts unfolding. Um, this was for a girl who's a bit of an alternative model that wanted to be a spider girl, but I wanted to do something a bit different. Yeah. Um, this was from another zombie walk. This is, um, Izzy wanted to actually be a Avatar zombie. It was the year that the Avatar movie came out. So That's amazing. So yeah, we just wow. painted all through the night. Her and Josh got painted up. And because they were so tall, I remember people walking behind them in the crowds to see if they had heels on because they were so tall, but they're actually naturally really tall. <laughs> they're just people. naturally very yeah, tall. Yeah, so they, they pulled off the Avatar thing really, really well. Fantastic. And you obviously must love what you do as well. I absolutely love what I do. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, we're going to go to a break now, but stay with us for the latest entertainment news on Showreel. We'll be right back after this. Don't go away. Welcome back to Showreel. Keanu Reeves has a new movie out titled 47 Ronin. It's a CGI laden historical tale set in, you guessed it, Japan. Canadian Reeves plays the leader of a small band of samurais out to avenge the death of their master. With an almost entirely Japanese cast, the film was shot simultaneously in English and Japanese. The film is due out here this month. Fight Club is getting a sequel. Chuck Palahniuk, the author behind the 1999 cult classic, has confirmed that Tyler Durden and his self-destructive alter ego Jack will be back for another round. Fox Studios, producers of the original film, are keen to get the rights to the story. Rocky is getting another sequel, well, of a kind. Creed is a spin-off Sylvester Stallone is producing, where he will play the mentor of the grandson of Apollo Creed, played so memorably by Carl Weathers. Michael P. Jordan is playing the lead, hot on the heels of his critically acclaimed performance in the true life tale Fruitvale Station. The film is expected here late next year. And in more Back From The Dead news, Poltergeist is to be remade. 
The Spielberg penned original is to be given the 21st century treatment with madman's Rosemary DeWitt. DeWitt stars as a mother whose child is kidnapped by malevolent, malevolent spirits. The producers will no doubt be hoping that the curse that followed the three originals, where a cast member died shortly after each production, will not come true this time. And finally in TV news, the Doctor Who 50th anniversary special, which features three Doctors and a few Daleks, is to be broadcast simultaneously around the globe in an effort to stop online spoilers. That means it would be shown here at 5am on Sunday the 24th of November, so make sure to set your alarm for that once. And that's all for the news. It's that time of the year when the nominations for the upcoming Emmy Award ceremony are announced. The ceremony for the most prestigious awards television will be held on the 22nd of September, but until then, all we can do is guess. For the first time ever, web series have earned nominations. Three Netflix series, Arrested Development, Hamlock Grove and House of Cards, have been nominated for awards. With the recent increase in quality of online content, do we think online exclusive distribution is the way of the future? I think that's a fantastic point there, Danny. I mean, there's so many um, things that are now being re released online and you can web stream them and stuff like that. Mm. You know, there's it's just such an ac accessible way to get it now. You know, if you can't be in front of the TV or the, the Foxtel or you can't record it, you can always go back online right. and watch stuff. So it, it's really interesting that way as well. Yeah, and absolutely. do you find, um, for, you, for the makeup industry and stuff and promoting your business as well, does online play a big role in that, for the, you know, permeating your work? Yes, definitely. I think people right. are much more reliant on it these days. Instead of watching television, they're going to watch it when they get home in the comfort in their own time. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. it's so great that you can do that as well. You know, if you get home late and you just really want to catch up on a show, no. you can always watch it online and you've, yep. you've got that option, which is which is really great. Um, I know they're calling it, you know, the third age of television, I was just <laughs> told today. Um, <laughs> But, you know, the first of all, they had the, the broadcast, then cable, now online. So, yeah, you know, yeah. it, is, it is fantastic how they, they've got that accessibility there as well. Uh, the nominations for Outstanding Comedy Series are 30 Rock, The Big Bang Theory, um, and a few other ones in there as well. Do you have any favourite comedies you like to watch, Charmaine? Oh, comedies. I'm more of a drama kind of a fan. You're more of a drama yeah. fan. Yeah. I know they've <laughs> got some big ones in their drama as well. I know Breaking yeah. Bad has been oh, one of the nominations. Love Breaking Bad, yeah. I love Breaking Bad too. I've yeah. just gotten into it. Oh, it really? It's so captivating. Yeah. I can't I haven't stop. Seen it. <gasps> Amazing. It sounds like characters. I'm missing out. Yeah. yeah, it is. And it's just Absolutely. such an interesting plot, and the way they tell it as well is so fa fa fascinating as well. Yeah. I know Homeland has been nominated as well. Have you <gasps> seen that so one, Danny? Good. Yeah. Yes, that is so good. What about you, Charmaine? Have you seen Homeland? I have before? seen it, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's another one that got me hooked. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that's one I also had to keep catching up online <laughs> with as well, I found, because I could never Starting forget them, it. Getting yeah. hooked, and then I lose all the time. I've got it all stored in my set-top box, and I don't have time to watch it. And I'm uh, hearing about it saying, don't spoil it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but... You have to have a movie day, uh, sorry, um, TV definitely. day, and just <laughs> catch up on everything definitely. that you've missed. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. multi here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just like keep watching them. Um, but speaking about awards, I know you've won some awards for your makeup um, and special effects work. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, um, the first one I went in was not long after I finished my course at the Gold Coast. At the, I went in the Creature Feature competition and literally was only a couple of weeks out of my course. So I was really proud to get second prize for that. Oh, wow. And um, not this year, but the previous three years when I started body painting, I went in the Australian Body Art awards yeah. and I won first prize twice and I won people's choice as well yeah. so that was really good and it was a really great feeling and amongst the really amazing artists too yeah. yeah and does it feel really nice to have that recognition you know um for other people to say that your work is really great and they're obviously appreciating it yeah too. it really is because quite often you're really not sure as an artist of how good you are or if it's to an accepted level when you mm. first start out when I went into the Australian Body Art Competition, it was my third ever paint I did. So mm. when I won, I was really wrapped. But I, I put a lot of hard work into the special effects. So, yeah. Yeah. And do you have any competitions you're entering into in the, in the near future? Yeah, I'll be definitely going in more body painting 
um, awards and more special effects awards. Yeah, definitely. What's your favourite out of the two? I love to combine the two. Yeah. Um, like the Cyborg Mermaid, it's mm. fully painted, but it's all right. prosthetics as well. I think wherever yeah. you can change what a person looks like to the extreme, that's probably my favourite thing to do. If you can't your clients get them. shocked by the yeah, outcome. Yeah, oh. it's, it's so much fun. I'll actually follow a client into the bathroom yeah. to see the look on their face I, when they look <laughs> in the mirror. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, guess, uh, I guess as well, because there's such a dramatic change in the appearance as well, when they have those portraits in their home, people just look at them and go, it's such a beautiful artwork you know yeah, they, yeah. they can really appreciate it and when somebody goes oh that's actually me you yeah know, they kind of get blown a bit blown Absolutely. away by yeah. it and they? it's 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 a fun thing for people to be able to show their friends that this is another yeah. part of me this is something else that I love to Absolutely. do and love to express myself doing and I that. imagine you get word of mouth from that if someone's walking in seeing their friends on the wall like Catherine just said they'd probably say well, where, where can I get this number I'd yeah. like to try and this. Facebook I've never yeah. actually advertised ever is that so, right? and I've been doing it for 10 years. Pretty Apart from Facebook and word of mouth, that's yeah. how it works a lot in Queensland. That's anyway. a fantastic testament to your skills and, you know, that you, you just, so many people love it. That yeah, they're just, just slack. I just got to keep working on that um, website. <laughs> 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 yes, because as we were saying, the internet is the way of the future. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, but if you were recommending to anyone who actually wanted to get started in, you know, the special effects or makeup industry, you know, is there any tips and pointers you'd give them of where to start? They do a good course. There's two really good ones in Sydney at the moment. Mm. And um, get onto somebody's coattails and learn learn on the job. Mm. I, I always wish I did that, make things easier to learn from somebody else. Yeah. But just get in there and start doing it. Like if you really have, uh, just building up, go and do a few student films, can contact Bond or you, yeah. you know, any of the local sure. unis or something. Yeah. Would you ever consider training anybody? Yeah, I've teacher? done a lot of makeup courses, taught makeup yeah. courses from my studio at She the Town Red. It's mm -hmm. a matter of finding time to do it because yeah. there's a lot of um, there's a lot of pre work in teaching mm. a lot of people. Okay. Um, but yeah, I love I love teaching. Yeah. But yeah, do it again. And you said in um, Brisbane as well, you're a bit of a jack of all trades, and that's kind of also in, been imperative to your success. Yeah. Um, why do you think that? You know. I think you have to be because there's not a lot of work. The um, Australian film industry has been struggling a bit for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And um, so you need to look at different avenues. And I have a lot of friends in alternative like burlesque and, um, and right. Cirque and things like that. And so that's what interests me and that's what I find quite exciting. Mm -hmm. So going in and helping them out on projects and getting involved in different projects is, is great, great amount of fun. And I guess yeah. it also gives you the opportunity as well. If somebody says, can you come and do this? You yeah. can say, well, sure, I, sure, you know, <laughs> yeah. I can do that yeah. or whatever. And it gives you a pool. Like if somebody, a lot of friends are always asking for models, I'm like, I'll find you a model in a heartbeat. Oh, oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. People, They'd be lining so. up. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're going to be kept very busy for the near future and yep. much longer into that. Um, but that's all we've got time for right now. We'll be back soon with more showroom. Stay with us. Welcome back to Show Showreel. The Wolverine is the sixth instalment of the X-Men films and follows on from the events of X-Men The Last Stand. Hugh Jackman returns to our screens once again as the Wolverine, our favourite mutant anti-hero. The Wolverine begins with Logan's familiar razor claws, intense anger and deep suffering as he mourns the loss of Jean. However, everything changes when a messenger arrives from Japan. Shortly, Logan is jetted off away from, the familiar, from familiar Canada and arrives in Tokyo, where he meets a mixture of colourful new characters. Here, Logan becomes vulnerable for the first time and is pushed to his physical and emotional limits. Let's take a look at the trailer now. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Sorry, I'll never hurt you or anyone ever again. It's too late. No! You can't hide. No! No! I 
I've been trying to find the Wolverine for over a year. It's not who I am anymore. <laughs> employer wants to say thank you for saving his life all those years ago. There is a time when our enemies knew honor. I wanted to offer you something no one else can. A gift. You have struggled long enough. I can end your eternity make you mortal. What they did to me. What I am. Can't be undone. Don't be so sure. I'm not healing like before. His flesh is weak now. Eternity can be a curse. A man can run out of things to live for. That day ain't here yet. Photography in this film showcased the versatility of the Japanese landscape, as you can see from snowy mountains to bustling cityscapes and tranquil beachfronts, which I actually really enjoyed. This film had a little bit more substance than its predecessor, with the action, emotion and plot captivating throughout. The Wolverine does follow the comic book movie formula, however director James Mangold and his team find time to explore more nuanced realms. The plot has many references to previous X-Men films, but it can also be watched as a standalone film about the character. With any, sorry, like any X-Men movie, it was action-packed with some great fight scenes and of course the glory of Jackman, Jackman's muscular chest. While many of these scenes I'm sure were enhanced with visual effects, it didn't seem to mind as it was subtle and relevant. Mangold is surprisingly skilled at merging his background in dramatic films with engaging action, with some of the sequences leaving me want to cheer. Overall, it was a great movie for both the comic book lovers and the casual audience. I would give The Wolverine four stars out of five. And finally, be sure to watch the credits for a tantalising snippet about the next X-Men instalment, X-Men Days of Future Past. Now, Danny, what did you think? Well, at last we agree on the movie. <laughs> I think we rated it the same. Yeah. yeah, I loved it. But instead of going through the same sort of review, I, I want to share some interesting facts about The Wolverine with you that you may not have otherwise known. One of the things I most enjoyed whilst watching The Wolverine was knowing that in addition to leading man Hugh Jackman being a fellow Aussie, uh, much of the movie was shot here in Australia. Although some scenes were shot in Tokyo, most of the film was shot here in Sydney. Some of the earliest scenes were shot at the Bonner Point Reserve in Cornell, which doubled as a Japanese prisoner of war camp. Some other interesting location shoots took place in the New South Wales town Picton, which doubled as a town in Canada's Yukon region. Filming also occurred on Erskine Street near Cockle Bay, as well as in Parramatta, which doubled as a Japanese city. The set at Sydney Olympic Park in Western Sydney was made into a Japanese village draped in snow. Filming also took place on a back street in Surrey Hills where the set was constructed on Brisbane Street and was transformed to look like a Japanese alley with authentic Japanese signage and vehicles scattered throughout. Another interesting fact about this movie was the use of some unknown actors. I love this part about James Mangold, the fact that he has a tendency to use experienced actors and he throws a newcomer into the mix. He feels that it helps the actor's dynamics. Teo Okamoto, who played the leading female role Moroko, she was actually a Japanese model before starring in this movie. Mangold doesn't believe in uh, casting people just to name them and he feels that it works well to surround newcomers with experienced actors as there's always a great chemistry that comes from that. Because of Mangold's unorthodox approach and his desire to film in our country, I had a connection with the movie before it even began and affection for Mangold as a director. 
And as for afterwards, I would highly recommend this movie as a must-see, especially at the big screen. A four out of five. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm so glad that we finally agreed on a movie yeah, that we no. both enjoyed. And on our last show. Exactly. It was fantastic. Mm. But what was something that you really enjoyed about it? Like, did you love the action or the scenery? Oh, let's or what talk was your about favorite? Hugh without his top on. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty mesmerizing. Um, I loved the scenery and I only wish that I'd done this research before I went into watching the movie about the Japanese villages. You yeah. know, I, I've lived in Japan and I actually couldn't tell the difference of what was said in Australia and what was said in Japan. Yeah. So I love that. Well done, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was so well done. And mm. and I, I actually knew that as well before going in, that a right. lot of the stuff was shot in Australia because I um, kept hearing about Hugh Jackman being in Australia and he's doing oh, lots yeah. of interviews with people yeah. um, because so much of it was shot here. And it was really fantastic the way they transformed those sets, yeah. um, you know, just into that that great scenery of, of uh, Japan, which is which can be very, very diverse as well. And it was much grittier. Yeah. As well. yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It was just it just had something more to it, I yeah. think, than the last one. It just had a little yeah. bit more. Um and I found the story as well was more engaging and you know yeah, there's just more to it. That's the only yeah. way I can really describe it. Yeah, I'd agree with that. But I especially love that um that Japanese village where they did a lot of the um acting where the father was. Mm. Um, overlooking a cliff. Mm. Can't even mm. imagine where that was. Yeah, it but, was pretty. It was so yeah. pretty breathtaking as well, and yeah. um, there was some stuff in it, the special effects and the fight scenes as well, which were just really, really oh. well done. You know, yeah. they were yeah. scattered throughout, but it didn't just feel like there was all these sharp cuts, and you were just I going know. from here to here to here. It was nice, smooth motion, and it, it was done fantastically. Yeah. Oh, we could go on and on about this movie though, but unfortunately, that's all we have time for this week. Thank you so much for joining us today, Charmaine. Thanks. For really me. appreciate it. It's, it's been great. an absolute pleasure. And this is Danny and my last show. So we thank you for joining us over the past few weeks. Next week, you'll be greeted by Matt and Andrew. So tune in at the same time, as always, for more Showreel.